Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at flying the H4, also known as the Hercules, or you know, the Spruce Goose, or the Spruce Moose Smithers, uh, depending on uh, what you would call there. Now you're probably saying, well this thing is a water only plane, uh, what are you doing on the ground here? Well the reality is if you intend to operate this aircraft um, from cold and dark, you can't start it in the water, it's sort of a flight sim thing, but uh, don't you worry, we'll deal with that in a second. Ah, all better. Yay for slow. <laughs> so first things first, uh, climbing in this thing, uh, for those who are not familiar with the history, uh, this is a wild airplane. This is, we need to be able to basically move an infantry division and some tanks on one aircraft. And when I turn my head around and just kind of take a peek in here, I realize that this is just this little teeny part of this upper deck here, and the rest of this is all cargo space. This thing is gigantic. Um, the good news is uh, they've simulated quite a bit of it. The bad news is they definitely didn't simulate all of it. So uh, that's going to work against us a little bit today, but that's okay. Uh, for one, which I'm super disappointed at, that none of this works. These things are so much fun to play with. It, ah, oh well. So there's just quick... A uh, note uh, before we get too, too carried away here is if you come over here on the left, there actually is a little kind of helper outer thing right here, which you can use for the purposes of kind of hitting some of the key buttons here to make your life a little bit simpler. You know, like if I zoom in really, really closely, you know, you have a general diagram, but you also have these options where you can turn things on and off if you need to. Um, again, completely optional. The other thing, of course, we have in here is a lot of switches that don't do anything, which is actually kind of a shame because there's a lot of really, really fun handles in here. And you've got all your radio settings, and your microphone, your marker beacons and everything like that. But unfortunately, the ones that work are basically the ones in front of us. And like, we don't even have a working autopilot on this thing. Well, one thing we do do, of course, is that we have the flaps lever, which I love is just a honking thing right here. Um, we have all of our trims that work fine. We have our throttles. We also have our hydraulic systems, which we can't even touch. And we also have this lovely engineer's panel. So now I've seen a lot of engineering panels over the years in different aircraft. I don't think I've seen many of them that are eight engine other than like the B-36, for example, which is actually 10 engine. Now it's important to know that this is grossly simplified. I don't mean that like as a diss. I just mean to say that when people look at this, they all panic. You don't have to panic. It's actually a lot simpler than a lot of this looks. Like you'll notice we have no control over any of these options. So we don't even have to stress about synchronizing generators. And you know, when I come down here and we have all of our ignition controls, it's just a simple switch. You know, we have our oil cooler flaps, which we have to stress about. We have our mixture control here. And all that's basically all preset and it's supposed to have a thing. And of course we have all of our throttles. We don't even have an option as far as setting the cow flaps other than, you know, popping over here, which we'll deal with in just a couple minutes. And notice for our RPM, it's just, it's just not a thing we have to worry about. Swinging over on this side, we have our electrical panel and our fuel panel. Um, right now, if you probably take a look, this is an oil panel as far as being able to move oil around the different ship here. And I love the fact it's got all these really ancient techniques here. And it's just, I, it, it's so cool if you ask me kind of how a lot of this works. But again, unfortunately, we don't have these, which makes it simpler to fly. Popping down here real quickly though, uh, we do have something we do need to come here and see, and that is the fuel valves. We want to make sure they're all turned on here and uh, enabled. Again, look at how many different fuel tanks that we have that we can disable. Swing in here, this is our fire switch. This is also the opportunity that's going to give us a couple different switches inside of here. We have the important alternators on here. I'm pretty sure this thing had a generator. We also have our APU switches over here, which um, we're going to need to basically get everything going. And of course, uh, you have the primer and starter for the APU. Yeah, this thing is so big, it has two miniature engines on board in order for the purposes of uh, building up enough energy to actually get going here. And again, like I said, it's just, it's absurd just the scale of this aircraft and that makes it wild. But enough of chat, let's go, go ahead and get this thing going. So I'm gonna go and pop up, we're gonna make sure these switches are on, we're gonna come over here, we have a battery switch right here, you can turn that on and off with a simple switch. No need for oil, uh, no need for primers, uh, we'll deal with that in a second. Of course, we have our engine starters, I'll show you the cheap and easy way to do that in a second. We have a bunch of uh, fire switches, which we don't need. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enable our APUs. Uh, we have a pair of them on here. We only really need to technically use one, but oh well. So coming down here, uh, we have a couple different switches. Of course, we have the primer switch, which doesn't work. And we have the starter, and of course, we have the actual generator switch itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the APU starter. Oh, what that's gonna do is it's gonna start a little teeny tiny engine. And it's way, 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 way back in the back. And what that's going to do is give us enough electricity to kind of get the ball rolling. Now, there's no throttle for this. So once you crank these things over, we're actually going to be generating electricity right away. We can't touch these two switches, which is kind of a shame. Because uh, one of the things I'd be loving to see here is uh, popping up here is to see some sort of electrical load, which I don't see. And uh, like I said, that bothers me just a tiny bit. I'm not stressed about it, but let's go ahead and do it. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to confirm that we have everything open as far as uh, fuel goes. We're actually going to go ahead and uh, open up all our cow flaps here. Uh, there's a lot of cow flap switches on this thing. Uh, this is uh, notice by the way when I click I get two switches together. That's because when they model these engines they're not eight engines. There's 
four engines, and basically we're just modeling all those. Throttle, we're going to crack just a tiny bit. We're going to make sure RPM is pushed all the way forward. All of our fuel switches are set to the correct position, and uh, now we're pretty much ready to rock as far as getting this thing started. Now, this is, uh, <laughs> this is kind of fun to play with. So what we're going to do is we're just going to hold down the primer for one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three, and one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three. Now, I would say set your parking brake before starting or something silly like that, but that's not going to mean anything to us. So here's our starter switches. Uh, there's a couple of fun ways to do this. Of course, you can sit here and hold each pair and kind of look over here, but I actually have a button on my joystick that is, activates all starters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my head over here. I'm going to go ahead and hit that switch. You probably can hear a loud crash as that, that system kind of gets itself going here. Oh, boy. And what you're going to do is you're basically just going to crank the entire engine until you get an RPM up that you actually need to get it to. Press the button, and we're just going to allow the whole thing to kind of spin up. And there it goes. Give it just a little bit of gas once it catches. You need to really crank it. My mistake was not cranking it hard enough. There it goes. I love how it comes in pairs also. Yeah, man. That'll do it. And then we have our last one. So you can't crank them all at once. Sigh. But they do crank pretty well on their own. Perfect. Sweet. So now you can see I have all eight, well, four engines anyway, uh, warmed up here. I'm going to go ahead and play with the throttle or so to kind of get it to about 1,000 RPM. These engines are obviously, in the real world, going to be behaving completely independent of each other, doing different sorts of nastinesses here. We're going to make sure the cow flaps are left open. We're going to keep an eye on our cylinder temperatures. And if you look at the window, you can see we've already started moving here, which is pretty impressive. Uh, once, of course, we know that the big uh, engines are running here, we can go ahead and pop off the two APUs. Not too, too hard. I've already got that set off. I've already got that set off. Sweet. Starters are off. Uh, engine primers are off. Uh, off oil valves, I'm not going to stress about too much. Everything here, fuel valves, everything is good. Cow flap. Let's go take a look at our oil switches here. I love the fact that they have just a separate switch here for this. You basically have to sit here and kind of do one of those things to control it. It's just a while. Then they have the feather switches. It's it's crazy. Don't forget, by the way, to engage the magnetos. A step I missed a second ago, but I did catch it when I went and checked. And we're just going to give it just a little bit of gas. All right, so now we are in the, let's get this thing all nice and warmed up and ready to rock. Because of the sheer scale of this aircraft, it takes very, very little to get going on this one. So what I like to do is I like to pop in a one click of flaps here. This is more than enough flaps for an aircraft of this scale. And again, you can just see how it's powering through the water, even though I haven't touched the throttle yet. Takeoff on this thing is uh, relatively unscientific. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to confirm everything is all nice and mostly warmed up here. And I'll pop them back. I love how the green range is actually outside of the white range, which is below the green range. It's just like, huh. <laughs> Interesting that they have kind of the uh, danger range versus, I don't know, it's just sort of an interesting little curve. All right, our cow flaps are in the correct direction. Our fuel flow, if I give it some gas, yep, the fuel flow comes up perfectly, which is something we want it to do. We have everything else. The cooling flaps are automatic there, so you can see they're about halfway open. Oil temperature is more than enough. Oil pressure is more than enough. Uh, we have plenty of stuff as far as, uh, well, we have new pneumatics. I can't turn them on. So take off on this thing, uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go ahead and adjust our aircraft, and I'm going to smoothly apply full throttle. Now, this is an aircraft that just sort of flies. Keep an eye, make sure we're in the green there. We're in the top of the green arc. Oh, that's more than enough. And all we're going to do is apply just a teeny tiny bit of back pressure. I don't need any special trim. I don't need anything special. This thing is just going to kind of go on its own here. Right, it's 80 miles an hour. It's going to go up to about 90. And we're airborne. That's it. <laughs> As always, uh, Flight Sim makes your initial view something like this, which is uh, nice and irritating. So I'm actually going to adjust my head so it looks correctly. This is nice and straight. Go ahead and pop up those flaps that we created, and uh, now we are on our way. Now, this aircraft has a staggering range. I could fly to Europe. <laughs> Just to give you an idea. Oh, we're in uh, Rhode Island, by the way. This is in the U.S. Give it a couple taps of trim. Uh, no difficulty at all with the trim process. Uh, flaps are pretty good. There's always a good time to come take a look and see how everything's going over here. We're going to back the throttle up just a tiny bit here. Now that we're airborne, we can pull back to 50 inches. We're also going to reduce our RPM down to 2,500. Got to pull it back just a little bit, and that's going to get us a pretty good climb there. Again, uh, we just want to monitor cylinder temperatures, which are basically frozen right now. And we're going to take a look at everything else. Looks beautiful. 
and now we're going. Remember a moment ago I said how we're, it looks like we're tipped down? This is up. This is straight in this aircraft. Uh, again, I'm not sure. I know why they did the view like that, but man, it is. Uh, it makes it a little more work to fly this thing than it probably needs to. So basically, we're going to go ahead and climb conventionally. Uh, we have turbochargers, or it could be superchargers. I don't remember in this particular version of the engine. But what's going to happen is as we climb, you're going to see your manifold pressure slowly decrease. So you're going to have to kind of kind of cap tapping it every once in a while. And you can see we have our B map, which is basically a measure of our current horsepower. Everybody's agreeing with each other here, which is good for us. That means everything's fine. But uh, once we go ahead and level the aircraft off, I'm going to build up just a little bit more altitude. I love the trim wheel here. Isn't this thing wild? Um, we're going to actually go ahead and hide that yoke there, make it a little bit easier for me to see. You've got indicators of all your different trim settings right here, which I think is great. Of course, we have outside air temperature, which I don't think that's outside air temperature. I think that's a broken gauge. Eh. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Of course, we have our direction. Uh, remember, this is an old school gyro. I press the D key to reset it, and you can see we're heading basically south here. Uh, what we're trying to do is get our way out to Martha's Vineyard. So turning this aircraft is a bit of a process, uh, kind of like if you've ever flown a 747. Uh, when you start turning, you need to kind of give it a good amount of rudder in order to actually kind of straighten that turn out. Otherwise, the plane kind of goes everywhere. You can see that the ball right there in the center, I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit, is uh, barely centered here as I'm pushing the rudder pretty substantially. Now, the cool thing is um, when I go ahead and come out of this turn here, you actually have to immediately start to kind of bring in a little bit of that right rudder to kind of allow this thing to smoothly, oh man, does this thing need a lot of rudder to keep coordinated. Wow. And that should get us going uh, quite nicely towards our little islands here. Oh man, we're gonna go ahead and level off at 2,000 feet and get ready for cruise. This is pretty good. Oh, it's about 2,000 feet here. I'm gonna let the nose come down. Uh, remember, this thing is, it's, it, it's got a lot of inertia. So when you go ahead and stick that down, nose down for the first moment, it's gonna be a little weird. Uh, again, this is why I hate the seating position in this aircraft. And that is completely level right there. I know you're sitting there going, I think we're going downhill. But remember, this is straight for us. And like I said, you can actually change these. And I released a video ages ago, which actually showed you how you can adjust those default camera angles. Because man, that would make me crazy. So now that we're good, we're ready to go ahead and set up for cruise here. We're gonna set our cruise power, which is a very, very simple. The book didn't give us a lot of information because there's really not a book on this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it back about three quarters, which is about 40 and uh, pretty typical for these kinds of engines. We're gonna come back to usually about 2,200 RPM is pretty good. And that should be pretty solid, 40 and 20, 25. That looks pretty good. Uh, we're already pitched up and starting to gain altitude, but that's okay because I'd rather do that when I'm coming over here to close things. So take a look at our temperatures. They're fine. We're gonna go ahead and close up the cow flaps, which is a nice and simple. You're gonna set them to the radiator cow flaps. So uh, we have the up position, which is basically gonna close them. There's also the neutral position. And what'll happen is you'll see the little needle go whoop. Yep, it already closed up. Now I'm curious actually. Let me just see something. Something I didn't check earlier. Yeah, see how chunky it is? <laughs> all right, we'll leave them all the way closed. And of course we can snap these into the neutral position because we don't need to hold on that switch. Obviously when we set anything that's cooling related to the neutral position, we want to come by every once in a while and just see what the cylinder temperature is. Obviously 200 or less is uh, what we're going to be going for here. Uh, as far as trim goes, uh, this aircraft is beautifully stable. Uh, once you give it a couple taps of down trim, usually that's more than enough to kind of get you going. If you need to adjust the aileron and rudder trims, uh, you can just kind of make your way over here and you have these big fat electrical switches for it. I've already said the RPM uh, pretty much automatically. I love how it's just a little switch. Like, oh man, that's so old school. All right, so let's go ahead and skip to the landing and the approach. All right, so we're basically setting ourselves up for our initial approach here. We're going to be coming around. We got a nice little lagoon. Obviously, if we pop in that lagoon, we're not coming back. <laughs> we'll take the uh, outside there, part of the island. So bringing this aircraft down is uh, pretty straightforward because it's got so much drag. Uh, when we want to descend, you just take the nose and you push down on the nose. That's it. That'll do it. That'll be more than enough as far as uh, to get us out of the descending process here. As we descend, of course, if you're coming from very, very high altitude, you need to make sure that you smoothly apply more power as we're going down, obviously, on account of the fact that the air is going to get thicker and the engines are going to be running fast, or running with a higher manifold pressure, or however you want to kind of take a look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce it just a teeny tiny bit. We don't have a lot of information as far as how to fly this aircraft, other than, you know, just my experience kind of tooling around with it. Uh, for those of you who are big fans of virtual reality, this is a pretty neat plane to fly. It's kind of like flying, you know, the upper deck of like a cabin cruiser that's 40 feet tall. It's just kind of neat. So landing on this thing, uh, the only thing we know is that the approach speed is 90 knots. Uh, that, that's, that's what we get. <laughs> Uh, that's enough. That will definitely get us down. But at the same time, as, uh, the flaps on this thing are intense. You know, we're going to go ahead and kind of make our way around really, really gently and quietly here. And like I said, we're not at risk of overspeeding anything here. We're only doing about 145, which isn't bad given the fact we're at 1,000 feet per minute. Got to pull the throttle back just a little bit. 
So as far as approach and all that goes, we yell over to our flight engineer. He's been monitoring our engine temperatures this whole time. He's been fixing with the mixture and all that stuff. Uh, that's just not things we need to stress out about as far as operating this aircraft goes. What we need to stress out about instead is uh, keeping the attitude proper for a water landing. Now, because this thing is so large and because it has so much inertia, when you come in contact with the water with this thing, it's um, if you have any speed, you will probably crush the whole aircraft. It's uh, just kind of a neat little twist there. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce to about 30 inches. Uh, which is going to get us slowing down pretty nicely. I'm going to go ahead now increase my RPM back up to our normal RPM here. This is going to make it so if I have to go around, I can just stomp on it real fast. It's also going to help slow us down a little bit. All right, back down to about 20 inches. Those gigantic engines are pulling us quite nicely here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of hold it here. I've got about 800 feet to go, which is plenty. Scare the crap out of everybody below us. Bap it down to about 15 inches, which will be plenty of power here. Lift that nose up just a little bit. Go ahead and pop in that first click of flaps. And the whole aircraft is going to pitch all over the place when you do that. Start working that trim in if you haven't done so already. It's slowing down a little bit. It's about 110 right there. Feels like we're moving in slow motion, but it's just that big. All right, let's go ahead and bring in the next click of flaps. You can see that will be maximum flaps there just by looking at that. That'll be 45 degrees. I'm going to come bring us around, and we're going to start getting ourselves to our approach speed, which we're at right now. Right foot, right foot, right foot. <laughs> you can see how much right foot that was. Not like we can slip the plane or anything like that. So now what we're going to do is we're just basically going to glide us down. I'm going to reset all my instrumentation. Fuel's on the fuel's tank. we got RPM at maximum. Everything's good. If we had a full bu fuel boost pump, this would be a good time to go ahead and enable it. I'm not going to worry about it too, too much, though. So landing this thing is really, really awkward. Uh, it's kind of like a carrier landing. Uh, remember, you're up very, very high. So right now, it looks like I'm basically pitched straight down, but I'm not. I'm actually going to lift the nose up a little bit. And now we're not pitched straight down anymore. We're actually pitched flat. So the trick here is you're basically going to work the throttle enter into a wing and ground effect here, and you're just gonna give it just a little bit of power until you're just a few things off the water, and then you're just gonna settle into the water just like that. Now you'll notice that I came in contact with water and immediately exploded. Let's try that again. Now, that hurt. <laughs> but like I was saying, one of the challenges you're gonna face with this aircraft, and I should have spent much, much more time on my making that a flatter approach, was the fact that the aircraft is literally that sensitive. And remember, you're up so high that when you do hit the water, it's a rather dramatic collision with the water. It's not like a little thing, so it's just like her sploosh, like you get like in a goose. It's pretty intense. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying really hard not to smack my left wing into the water here as I line myself up. Another problem you're gonna be facing, and uh, this one's a little bit more subtle, is the depth of the water that you're trying to land in. So what I'm gonna do is actually change my view to make it a little bit flatter so it's a little bit easier here. So already I'm man, pretty darn close to the water here. Nice and easy, not too much power. And you can see I'm just holding the aircraft as flat as possible and gently easing it down here. And you can see it's only a couple inches off the water here. And all I have to do is pull the throttle back just a little bit to get the step in the water first. And you can see very quickly just how hard this is going to be to hold it at this particular attitude. Reduce the throttle a little bit. Again, keep your heads up in the same position. And when we do hit the water, like we're about to in eh, about a millisecond here, it should be a nice, easy sink into the water. There shouldn't be any drama whatsoever. And you can see the differences between the two approaches. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to show that is to show you because of that stupid seating angle, which I've been complaining about the whole time, look at how easy it was to think, hey, everything's perfect, and all of a sudden realize that you're actually at a you know, you're looking like this and you're basically smacking the water with the nose first. Uh, once we get in the water, of course, uh, they did uh, put an imaginary water rudder on this thing to make it a little bit easier to kind of pull itself around. Uh, one of the easiest ways, of course, uh, to get this thing to move around in the water is you have differential thrust. You know, you can come over to one of the throttles on the far side and incredibly, notice you can, uh, let's go ahead, oh, move my head over here if I want to point a little bit closer in that direction. You could come over here with the throttles and of course you could adjust it to go ahead and push it so that it would do that. Now, people with split throttles like I do, if you have split throttle one and split throttle two, you're going to get this happening. So you're actually going to have to go into your settings and modify them so that you actually have the ability to just power up the thruster on the side that you need. We're going to, to hold that for a couple seconds and kind of spin us around. That should be fine. And keep in mind when you are doing any water maneuvering with differential thrust, that in order to cancel that out, you're going to have to give it opposite thrust in order to safely kind of cancel it. But remember, you're a giant airplane. Once we're down on the ground and everything's uh, nice and safe here, I'm going to come fly over here. A uh, big thing, notice our engine, engine never got warm at any point. Shutdown is pretty straightforward. Uh, we have a bunch of fuel gauges right down here. Uh, the other thing, of course, which you could do is you could take the engine condition levers and you could pull them all the way back. Uh, that's basically the equivalent of uh, zeroing the mixture here. And everything is going to start slowly shutting itself down. And this giant thing, which never really flew flew, even though it really did fly, 
comes to a rest. Enjoy.